Hey, how's it going? Oliver from GT Servers. So listen, 2020 was, uh, well, 2020. But with the new year, boy, have we got something for you. And not the <laughs> 2021, new year, new me kind of new either. I'm talking about our Multicraft panel getting a bunch of new stuff to help make your life a lot easier. Now keep in mind, this is only the first set of updates. As time goes on, we hope to introduce a bunch of new stuff to make your experience much better with us. All right, buckle up, boys and girls. Let me show you around. If you've been a client with us for a while, remember how you couldn't reset your Multicraft password with the link that was there? Yeah, sorry about that headache. No more, though. Now we've included instructions on how you can reset your password instead. Just click on Password Reset for GG Clients, and that's you if you bought the server, and follow the instructions there. The other one, Reset for Non-Clients, refers to people who have been given Multicraft access as a co-owner or a similar position like that. After logging in, if you've already used Multicraft, you'll see a pretty big difference already. If this is your first time using Multicraft, you come at a very ripe time for new innovation and change. Let's start with MOTD, or Message of the Day. We've implemented a very easy way for you to set up your server description the way you want it. You can either click on the MOTD button here, or go under Appearance on the left, and then MOTD Tool. Here you could insert your MOTD text to give it some spicy flair. We've even put in a color generator for you, which you can access by clicking here. Quick note before we move on. When putting in text, if you want it to be bold or underlined, make sure you put in that first and then the color. Otherwise you may confuse the generator. Once you're done, just copy the text and paste it into the box. Bam, bam, boom, we've got red, white, and blue. Though the blue is kind of a sore in the eyes, eh, not the point. You can customize it however you like. Moving on to the server icon. You can press the green icon button here, or go under Appearance on the left, and Server Icon. Nothing very complicated here, just make sure you stick to these three notes here. Firstly, have your icon 64 by 64 in size. By the way, if you're on PC, you can check the dimensions by choosing a random image on your computer, right-clicking, going under Properties, and then Details, and it'll tell you the dimensions right here. To change the dimensions, you gotta use something like Paint or GIMP, or if you wanna be a truly classy gentleman, Photoshop. Second, your icon has to have a PNG extension. The way you can check if it does is by right-clicking on the image on your computer, going under Properties, and you can see what type of file it is here. To change this, you should open it in a photo editing program and save the image as a PNG. And finally, the third point, make sure it's not bigger than a megabyte. While a PNG extension usually is the largest, most commonly used still image extension, you definitely can have it be that size by potentially reducing its resolution. An easily accessible option of Photoshop, not sure about other programs, but I believe in you. Now for what I consider to be the most helpful tool that we've implemented to figure out server issues. This isn't just helpful to you as a server owner, but also to us who work here. I'm talking about the crash logs button right here. Now ideally, you don't want your server to crash at all, especially if you're playing a modded server, but Minecraft being Minecraft, it's just an unavoidable part of life, kind of like hemorrhoids. If you've never had them, you are a blessed spirit chosen by the gods themselves. Here's how it works. Every time your server crashes, it generates a crash report. That crash report will show up here, like this. You can either look at the log yourself by clicking on Show Log, or click on Scan Log to have the system scan the log and figure out what the heck caused the crash or what might be preventing your server from starting back up. I should note that this is a relatively new system and will not always work. Though here's the beautiful part. In the event that it can't find a good solution or understand what the problem is, it will actually send the report to us and we will use this to make the automated system smarter. And you can always reach out to us via chat or by sending in a ticket if the system isn't giving you a solution. Pretty nifty, huh? The more error reports we get, the smarter the system gets. Less talking to support means more playing for you. Continuing our tour, another button is the UUID Finder. Now, really, only very specific instances require you to even care about this? Think of your UUID, your universally unique identifier, kind of like your social security number, or, if you're from Europe, your personal code. This will follow you around everywhere you go, as long as you've got a legitimate copy of Minecraft, which you should, you know, get. So take Notch for instance. You just type in Notch here in the MC username box and boom, you've got his details to do whatever you gotta do, like ban him or whitelist him. Speaking of whitelisting, the whitelist editor. From here you can turn it on or off. Just for context, a whitelist is a list of players who are allowed to play on your server. If you're not on the list, the server will reject your connection. For you to set it up, just press enable whitelist and either turn on your server if it's already off or restart it. It won't work without a restart if your server is on. After that, remember how we talked about the UUID a second ago? You'll need that to whitelist someone. Punch in the person's username and either their username ID or raw UUID and you're all set. 
On to the other things. For instance, if you look at the note ID at the top, there's now a check status option behind it. If you click on it, it won't automatically direct you to the note that you're on, so take note of your note ID. Once you're on the new page, type in the number here and press enter or the magnifying glass. This menu will show you the uptime and other information about the node that you're on, like its CPU usage, RAM usage, disk usage, etc. As a side note, it's also useful to include your node IDs and tickets that you create. We've also added a little upgrade button down here, so you can get linked directly to the tutorial on how to upgrade your service. You should check out the video, made by me just a quick flex, <clears throat> for in-depth information about upgrading or downgrading. Feeling like building an entire server from scratch? Well, now you can. Going under Files and Wipe Server, you can now fully wipe every single file and folder off the server and begin anew. Forewarning though, we don't allow applications that will allow you to make changes to our already existing panel to, for example, circumvent the player count. Long as you stick by the rules, go wild. If you look to your left, under Tools and My Din Map, you'll see My Din Map. If you've never heard of it, it's a plugin or mod which is essentially like Google Maps, but for Minecraft. If you've ever wanted an easy way to have Denmap set up, you're in the right place. We've got an automated system to do it for you. We've also created an experimental system that can try to install it for you if you don't have it in your mods or plugins folder already. Though it is experimental, so if it doesn't work, you'll have to do it manually. Don't worry, our knowledge base article here, somewhere on the screen, will guide you through it. And now if you look at the bottom of the page, there's two bars over there that talk about resource usage. Unfortunately, the bars there aren't the most reliable sources of information to measure usage, which we're hoping to fix it enough. But for the time being, we've added a link here to our article which you can use to see what your usage is. If you're running Paper Spigot, you download Essentials X and use the command forward slash GC in game. If you're running a modded server, you'll have to download SpongeForge and Sponge Mod called Nucleus. After that, you go in game and type forward slash server stat. Don't worry, there's an article somewhere on the screen again to explain to you how to do that. And that's it. Visit us at ggservers.com right now to get 50% off your first month, making our cheapest option a dollar fifty all throughout January. And be sure to join our community Discord at discord.gg forward slash gg servers for giveaways, advertising your server, and getting help from some guy called Solara Bamua and his many elf friends.